The illustrious Jabba bids you welcome. <laughs> I'm going to regret this. I'm Pete Mitchell. He's Peyton Jones, and this is the Church Planner Podcast, brought to you by Church Planner Magazine. Hey, Church Planner, this is Pete Mitchell. Nuh-uh. And Peyton Jones. Hey, Church Planner, this is some other guy. <laughs> now that I can get behind. Hey, guys, this is the new and improved Church Planner podcast with uh, formerly Pete Mitchell and formerly Peyton Jones. Now two guys that live in mom's basement and drink beer. According to Ed Stetzer, remember that? Well, you know, if it came from Ed, it must be true. <laughs> Who are you guys? Are you just hanging out in mom's basement? Yeah, yeah. You know what's funny is I am dragging this morning. So I am uh, only about five or six sips of coffee in. Uh, that's never a good sign. And I, I honestly, I I don't know that I got any good stories. I do. And it's connected to that. Good segue, Pete. So here's what happened to me today. I get, I get up. It's Red Cup Day. You know that, right? It's Starbucks. I have no Merry idea Coffee, that everybody. Means. That's what it says. If if you go into Starbucks today while supplies last, you get a red cup. Now, for those of you wait, 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 listening, wait wait, 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 can I pull out the Christian card? Wait a second, man! They took the cross off the cup. No, 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 no. Even though there was never a cross on the cup. <laughs> no, no, they, no, no. We must say that there was, <laughs> and now they are abandoning our Christian brethren. Weren't, weren't, wasn't the big thing they were going to put a, 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 a pentagram, which that whole thing started as a joke. Or was it a satire a, story, like Babylon Bee or something? It was, and everybody took it serious, and the That's Christian so community got all hot and bothered and, and riled up about it. And, you know, I so I put on my Facebook story this morning, I took a picture of the coffee cup that said, the free plastic reusable red cup that I got for going at butt crack of dawn. Um, and it said Merry Coffee, and I, I put on my Facebook. It's a story, so it'd probably be gone by the time this airs live. And you can't get any more red cups. <laughs> but uh, anyways, the um, this, this saying is Merry Coffee, and I put, you know, for Starbucks wisely knows that God calls coffee to, to, to fall on the just and the unjust. Well done, Starbucks. You know, so Merry Coffee works, right? Because it's common grace, as they call it in theological terms. So, uh, anyways, I go there this morning, I get that, you know, eggnog latte, first one of the season, tastes like sweet phlegm in a cup mixed with coffee. And I take it home to my wife and, um, and, and I'm helping my wife get something. We're going to talk to whales later today. And so I'm getting everything set up for that and ministry ninja podcast. And as, as I'm doing that, I guess mayhem happens in the kitchen. They have knocked over. My eggnog latte, the the children, right? This is my two girls, six and ten, have knocked over the precious, and I don't know about this. Like I'm totally oblivious. All hell's breaking loose in my life. My coffee, because I did not brew a cup, is in that cup. I did microwave the leftover out of the pot. You guys know how it goes. Your church planners, every little bit counts. And uh, so anyways, um, later on, they, they, they're whispering when I take them to school. And I'm like, hey, what's up? And they go, we have a surprise. You'll find out. So I go to pick up my coffee, and there's this card, little homemade card with money stuffed in it attached to the side of the coffee cup. That's awesome. And I look, and, you know, remember, I don't know. And there's this, like, dear dad, we are so sorry. We knocked over your coffee this morning. Here is $4.75 to buy another one that we took from our own money. <laughs> and uh, I, my wife's texting me the picture going, I can't stop laughing at this. Um, but anyway, so so I'm like, whoa, whoa. And so I take a, I, I'm like, oh, guys, you know, I'm like, that that's so cool. Like, look, I'm not going to take your money like. Uh, you know, um, I, I haven't read the whole note, by the way, and I take a drink. Like, I just see that there's a note. You spilled my coffee. Okay. Because I said, well, so 
you spilled like there's some in here and they go yeah and but they don't say anything and so i i take a sip and they like cringe and i go what and they're like you weren't supposed to drink it dad and i'm like uh what's wrong and they go "Ah." and they're like they're like smiling and covering their faces and like laughing and giggling and i'm like and remember i haven't had much coffee I've only had a few sips of this thing. So, like, my blood's starting to boil. What's going on? I'm like, Dad. And then and then later, my wife sends me the note, because I've left the house already by this time. This is what the last of the note says. P.S. When we cleaned it up, we used paper towels and squeezed those back into the cup. Nice. Nice. I have drunk... Eggnog latte squeezed out of paper towels back into the cup. Imagine the horror. <laughs> that's so <laughs> awesome. So that's, I, I'm dragging today as well. So, dude, last night, Luke is telling me that he's got this uh, this little, you know, bank, little shaped like a Zamboni, and it's got money in it. And he's What's like, What's a yeah, Zamboni? Oh, that's the uh, the, the ice ice, race, yeah. ice skating ring thing. Yeah. Okay, so he's like, uh, Dad, I got eighty dollars. I'm like, eighty dollars? I'm not buying you a dang thing ever again. Whoa. When are you gonna start buying me some stuff? Taking that to Star Wars land, son, dude. Next eighty time we dollars. Build, okay, build a droid your stinking spoiled. self, kid. He is <laughs> spoiled. How how does a kid his age who has no job? How does he get 80 bucks? I never had 80 bucks in my Dude, account. No kidding. Till till I like had a part-time job and it quickly went out because I had to pay insurance, gas, and whatever else. I spent all my money from my very first paycheck on laser tag. No stinking way. You're I mean freaking the my rifles. Hero. And everything. <laughs> Not just the little little black guns, but I mean the full size. AR-15 oh rifle gosh. laser tags. Oh, my gosh. And and we're surprised at who you became in adulthood, you know? I Do mean, you know how it, much money and batteries all of that stuff costs? Like, that was oh 30, man. 40 bucks right there. Just the batteries alone. Hey, boss, going to get a raise? <laughs> laser tag ain't cheap, you know? I got a habit to feed. <laughs> Yeah, that was that was what I did with my first page. That is, dude, that is so funny. It's oh funny gosh, in light of today. So I never put it together with how I live today, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty much why you still go to work. It pretty much is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so dude, that's uh, so rad. By the I way, I love on it, a, man. On a little side note, I haven't had a chance to talk about this because uh, Dan and I weren't able to record our podcast earlier this week. But uh, oh. Did a uh, a shooting competition last week and uh, took first overall. Eh? Eh? Oh no way, dude! Congrats! Oh, I know. I still not for those of sure you new to the podcast, welcome to the podcast. This is what we call smack talk. It lasts somewhere around thirty minutes, and uh, then the second thirty minutes are our very important topics on church planning. But you kind of got to get to know us, right? It's kind of like if you're a real church planner. That means that you're probably more apostolic. This is how you roll, right? You get to know people. It's like, hey, you know, hey, wine and dine me a little bit. Don't just get me saved, you know. Let's let's build some relationship, do some discipleship. Let's uh, let's have a meal. Let's talk, and then boom, you know. I guess boom. I mean, you know, then 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 we can start talking, you know, about other stuff. And but, why don't uh, you tell everyone right now? What they should stick around for. What's the today's well, topic? Well, today's topic, Pete, for those who go on to the next level today, I want to talk about they'll, uh, 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 they'll receive. Da, 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 I feel uh, like it's a game show, you know? Like uh, For those who go to the next round, they'll receive. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to give you a little of, salt and pepper uh, uh, soundtrack in the background. Is that what that was? That's what that was. <laughs> let's talk That's about cool. baby. Let's talk about and me. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you know, we should drag more often because uh, the synergy is good. Maybe what should coffee, we call today's episode just... the one about sex? Can we call it that? Do I have to mark explicit because I use that word? Maybe. 
I, I'm wondering though, because you know, uh, there's a synergy right now. Maybe when we record this, we're just high on caffeine. You know. Well, I did take 600 milligrams of caffeine, and now I'm drinking coffee. So add that. Oh, to that. there we go. And this could end up being a great podcast or the quickest podcast we've ever done. <laughs> I'm not sure. Which. Lagging at the start, flying at the end. I'm just saying. So, hey, so yeah, um, today's topic is actually about sexual purity. Um, we've had yet uh, another leader who has confessed. I guess I don't think Ali- leader is the right word. Uh, public figure, perhaps. There you go. Um, because there's no one in all of Christendom who would call that yeah. guy a leader ever. That's true. That's so, true. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and, and I'm really hesitant to even mention him because it's so soon and I don't know anything about him or what's happened. But obviously, it's hit the news that John Christ has, um, you know, there's been allegations. I don't know the truth or untruth of those. He has said that there was some truth to some of it. So all that to say, um, anytime a big public figure like that, um, you know, within Christianity or who represents Christianity, it's always hard. You know, it's always kind of like, oh, uh, okay. Um, and, and I'll talk about why it's hard. Some people, oh, well, he should never have been up there on the pedestal. That's not the point. There, there is a well, see, biblical. To me, I, I was like, okay, the dude was a comedian, and he wasn't like even a theologically accurate comedian. He was more of like just a dude who grew up in the church, and so he knew all the buttons to push. Like, right? I was. I never. That's why even today I'm like, okay, so why is everyone like? I, I don't get why everyone's like in shock. It's like, right? why? He's not a pastor. He's just a dude who grew up in the church and had some funny things to say about the church. He wasn't even theologically accurate most of the time. Like, right. I don't, I don't get it. What's everyone all up in arms about? Right. So, so the idea is that for, do you want to go into it now? Oh, go for it. Okay. So, so that was the quickest Mac talk ever. Break. It was, but you know, no one else will go straight back into it. <clears throat> so the idea of John Christ is that um, he, you know, for good or for ill, it's kind of like when Paul says, you know, some preach Christ, and I'm not putting him in this category. I want to be kind to him because that dude's got enough stuff crapping down on his life right now. Um, right now, he's going to need to get really close to Jesus. And apparently there's people that have been victimized by him. So, uh, and I'm, I'm saying very carefully, apparently I, you know, look, I don't, I don't want to be the guy. It always irritates me. If you notice me on social media, I stand back and I watch and I wait for the stories to unfold. I've been in leadership long enough to know the first part of the story is usually inaccurate. And how Proverbs says, whoever tells his story first will be perceived to be telling the truth. So, uh, and then there's also a proverb that says, um, a fool speaks before hearing all of the facts. So today's podcast, I don't really want to talk about him. Um, I want to talk about us. I want to talk about what do we do if we're in a position of public uh, visibility and we get, um, you know, uh, we start struggling. How do we handle that? Some of you listening are in ministry and you're, you maybe have demons that you're wrestling with today. And I want to talk through that, what you can do and who you can talk to and some steps you can take because that is important. But as far as John Christ himself, I don't know what other people's reactions are. For me, It's always the kind of thing where I know because it's humor, he has been widely shared. Um, So this will hit secular media at a Netflix show coming on, um, you know, and and it is funny whether you're religious or not. Like if I hear a comedian make fun of atheists or Mormons or, you know, uh, evolution or whatever, I will laugh and I will watch it regardless of whether or not it's my belief. And people do enjoy, and the Simpsons prove this, that the Simpsons make fun of church all the time. And I, I put John Christ 
or Christ. I don't know if it's Christ or Christ. Um, I'm, I'm not a huge fan, but I, I've seen some of his stuff and it was funny, but I think that what we're looking at is he is kind of like a, a personal version of The Simpsons. And Do you because remember of his... that episode of Seinfeld where the dentist becomes a comedian and Jerry's offended and they're like, oh, you're offended because he's a, uh, he's making a, a, something that had to do with like Jewish jokes or something like that. And he's like, no, I'm offended as a comedian. <laughs> <Like>. <laughs> Sorry, that's what all of this just reminds me of. of no, I'm that's offended funny. as a comedian. It's just not very funny. Sorry. No, no, that the, that is Reverend funny. Love I actually Joy. thought Simpsons. I thought what I Reverend saw of him and that's was, what made me laugh. No, that that that. I mean that that Seinfeld's freaking hilarious, and he. I've I've watched Seinfeld go off on the last comedians and cars getting coffee. Um, they Which mentioned is a great show, amazing. I've seen every and episode. It's same. wonderful. I love it. I'm the I'm the same. I can't wait for the next season. He is a very fascinating dude. Super intelligent. I love um, how he's always like, "Oh, you got to leave a big tip. You, you got to because they're going to go back and say, you know, oh Jerry Seinfeld, he left a lousy tip. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like you want to be his waiter because he's going to leave a big tip because he's afraid of what you're going to say about him. I right, love that. Right. No, it's great. And um, but anyways, uh, what what was I? I don't know. We, Sorry, uh, I totally ruined your your train of thought. No, but he's he's kind of like the Simpsons, um, John Chris. And so so here's the deal. Um, does it does it affect Christians? Yes. And here's any time, like I was saying, where Paul says some preach Christ out of selfish ambition, some don't. Nevertheless, Christ is preached. He he's he's glad that Christ is being proclaimed. Um uh, those of you that know I'm writing a, a textbook right now, I'm writing a textbook, and it, it'll shock everyone to hear me say, of all people, that really church planning isn't a big deal in the book of Acts. It's just not. It's not a focus. Even though I constantly am referring back to Acts to see what the early church did, I don't think the focus is church planning. Paul's focus of his entire ministry, both when Jesus appears to him and whenever Paul talks about his ministry as an apostle is proclamation of Jesus as Lord. So whenever we hear somebody who is a spokesperson for the faith, which I would say, even though John Chris may not qualify as a leader, he, good or ill, he, because of his platform and fame, became inadvertently a spokesperson for Christianity. Now, if you analyze it, you say, well, it you know wasn't good. I mean, if anything, he was kind of speaking. He was making fun of us. And okay, and I, I love that personally. I love to be made fun of um, as Christians. I think it's funny. Um, but that said, it will have an effect. And here's the effect it has. See, those Christians, they don't have it any more figured out than we do. And so the problem is, it's kind of like when Paul in 2 Corinthians goes to defend himself. Paul didn't really care. Like, if you understand the context of, of what's bothering him in 2 Corinthians, is that they told him, hey, you're not welcome back here, Paul, until you get letters of recommendation from someone we respect. Then we'll think about letting you back to Corinth. Now, <laughs> Paul is concerned because he talks about false teachers, and he says, look, I'm not concerned about me. I'm concerned about the gospel here. And so I think we got to approach this. I, I don't I, – I think everybody's human. I think John Christ, uh, if he victimized people, that puts, that puts things in a different category. That means that there's a sickness and he needs to get help for whatever addictions, and I think he's admitted that. Um, but again, I don't want to speak because I don't know enough. But, you know, if it's just that the dude has fallen, um, you know, into something, he was unmarried. Um, if he's fallen into something with somebody and, you know, says, hey, I, I know the gospel's better than that. He said I didn't li live up to my Christian convictions. Um, then then I, 
you know that that's that's okay. So uh, the victimization is is a different category than just a dude who screwed up and said, "Hey, I I I did not <laughs> possess myself," as Paul says in the Old King James, um, with integrity. And you know th- those are two completely different things. But I do think that it it has a broad impact on our witness as Christians. Um, I do think it undermines the gospel when this happens. And I believe that that's the reason that Paul says, um, you know, Timothy, you know, make sure that you flee the evil desires of youth. When you put someone in eldership or deaconship, make sure they're faithful to their wife, right? Like there's, there's character issues so that things don't get, um, undermined, if that makes sense. Mm hmm. Yeah, no, it makes sense, and it's it's kind of uh, I don't know, man. It's it's kind of funny because uh, Wayne and I were actually talking about some of this stuff yesterday in the context of David and Solomon and um, Bathsheba, and I mean the whole the whole the whole gambit. And I mean, it's not a new issue, <laughs> right? Right. I mean, this is this is an issue as old as as man. Clearly, and um, I mean, you got something that goes back that far, that many thousands of years. Uh, it's going to always be an issue, and that's why I think, you know, when when we've talked about this stuff in the past, uh, you know, one of the things that we've talked about is you have to incorporate certain safeguards into your life so that you don't put yourself into a position where temptation will overtake you. Right. Um, and that's, I don't know. I, you know, I, I think back about so many people, like even the guy who uh, ordained you. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and he had uh, issues that came down and, and it's just like, I think we start off and think to ourselves, you know, I don't need to be that strict. Like, what was Billy Graham's rule? Like, he wouldn't even get in an elevator yeah. if there right. was uh, another woman in there. And, um, but, you know, he, he's one of those few guys who didn't have any issues. And at least I, I don't remember any ever coming up about him. Do you? About Billy Graham? Nope. Yeah. Nope. Kept his nose clean. Because he he had these rules that he lived by, and then you even have uh, uh, guys like Mike Pence, who um, you know basically have very similar rules. And of course, he's then mocked. You know, oh, I can't believe. Look at the way he he lives and does this and that and the next thing. And it's like, yeah, but he doesn't want to have any of these issues, which doesn't mean he won't. I mean, I don't know Mike Pence. I mean, he's a politician, so I pretty much think he's the scum of the earth. Just you know, <laughs> right there. <laughs> But, but, uh, but at least, you know, based on what, what has been uh, said about him publicly and what he's said about himself, those aren't going to be issues, hopefully, that he runs into because <clears throat> he has these safeguards and he's chosen to live by them. And I think we just, uh, I don't know, I think too many times we're like, oh, well, this isn't that big of a deal. Right. Uh, I, I don't need to worry about this. You know, this is this is a friend from, you know, junior high or whatever. I don't know. I mean, I don't know what the excuse is that that people start with, but but you know, I don't know. Well, and it it's always it's always there. It's always an issue. You, know, you know, I always I always um think to when Jesus is sitting on the side of the well with the woman there and she's you know, uh, depending on how you read, there's two ways to read it. That either she left five men or five men left her or is a combination of both. And I think if it's the narrative better, if she's been tossed to the side, I think what Jesus says makes a lot more sense. Um, but she is, she is fishing. Here's a guy talking to her and she makes the point. You Jews don't normally talk to us Samaritans. So she's asking the question in her mind, why is this dude talking to me? And she starts flirting with him. If you go back and read that, um, she says some flirtatious things to him. And there were dynamics there. And part of Jesus's um, 
reason, I think, that he said, you know, you'll be, um, uh, you, you drink from this well and you'll thirst again. But if you drink from the, the living water that I give you, and remember he's sitting on the well and it was a gentlemanly thing for the, for the male to get the water for the female. It actually, um, it goes back to like Jacob's well and all that kind of stuff that he draws water for them and yada, yada. But the, the, uh, she, is misunderstanding and he says you know look you'll you'll never thirst again and um and she's being a little bit coy with him and so so these these are just dynamics that happen and of course he's telling her look all the the love of all these other men have let you down but here's here's a, a never failing well well that will well up within you that will be in you and you'll never thirst for this love it'll be there forever yada yada but um but even there, you know, you see the dynamics. Mary Magdalene, people have tried to make this big thing about, you know, Mary Magdalene and Jesus having an affair. But, you know, she surely, you know, there were, there were, you know, Jesus Christ superstar, which I don't go to for theology or biblical studies. But that brings out the fact that, hey, naturally, this woman's going to be drawn to him and be in love with him and have a crush on him. Because how could she not? Here's the most amazing man she's ever met, a man she can trust. So when you're in ministry, you have those same dynamics going all the time. I, I remember about a month ago, maybe two months ago, some woman made this comment when she found out that uh, Andrew is married to a pastor. And she was just like, it was almost like, she, first she craps all over her own husband in the conversation. Then she says, that must be so amazing. <laughs> to be married to a man of God. Did, did did she just say, yes, being married to Peyton is so amazing? Well, it, you know, Andrea comes home, she tells me, she goes, I almost vomited because this is, <laughs> this is why women get infatuated with pastors because there's this fantasy that this man, you know, this man of God is somehow... You know, he is Jesus. <laughs> He's the man of faithfulness. And, and it's not true. You know, all of us in our ministry, we know, you know, like Paul says, hey, those of you that, that read John Christ and think you stand, take heed lest you fall. Like, we know who we are, right? Like, I know who I am. I know that I'm not above anything. For that reason, like, I'm not on Instagram. Um, I was on, I have an account I think I need to delete, but... As soon as I started hearing like people saying butts and boobs are, I'm like, yeah, I'm off. You know, I posted on once what? about my run on huh? Instagram. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, I don't and, know. I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't do the Instagram. Well, and that's the thing is. By the way, um, uh, I'm not. I'm, I'm not Generation judging. X. So uh, I'm pretty much locked <laughs> in on Facebook, and that's kind of the only thing I can do. Yeah, Gen X. Yeah, I. You know, it's so funny, man, because I I don't judge anyone who's on. Instagram, but you got to have your own boundaries. And I think that's kind of where you're going earlier. That's one of mine. And at some point you have to create a boundary. There has to be places you don't go. There has to be things you won't watch or see with your eyes. There has to, and when I say don't go, like maybe you need something that's like a, you know, a type of accountability on your computer. Maybe your wife needs to get email report of every website you've been to in the month, like, you know, porn, uh, all that kind of stuff. Like there's all those things that we probably need to be, you know, hedging and a, a hedge of protection is what Satan called it. Um, with Job, he says, you've put God a hedge of protection around Job and I can't touch him. And, you know, it's kind of like where Paul says, flee all this stuff. You know, we live in a world that somehow we got to create a, a, a protective perimeter around ourselves. Um, and the gosh, as I'm hearing myself say that, I'm not anti culture. Pete and I, you know, we geek out on culture and we love, we probably watch things you wouldn't watch, you know. Hey, Pete and I hey, watch Breaking don't, Bad, you know. Don't include me <clears throat> in your sinful life, sir. <laughs> I mean, the, I go to the range. That's it. That's the extent <laughs> of what I do. So there, there are certain shows that you know, like when Game of Thrones came out, 
Um, those are hot people. Which, which and by the like, way, I'm about halfway through season three, finally, of Stranger Things. So just thought I'd throw that out Oh, there. good. Yeah. yeah. Not as good as you made it out to be. I was like, where, where's the great... Uh, I'm like, okay. I thought Stranger Things 3 was the second best season. I couldn't stand 2. 2 is awful. Um, it took me like eight months to go back through 2. You know, three was just fun. It was like a fun romp through the 80s. I guess. That's all it was. It was just making fun of the 80s all the time. And I I got time for that. Um, When you get to another, I I can't blow up for you, but you're going to get to a scene and you're going to be like, that's awesome. And I I just can't blow up for you. But it's an an 80s um, homage. Uh, But anyways, I digress. (laughs) (laughs) We'll bring this back in the smack talk. You just wait and see. I'm 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 easily distracted by bright shiny eighty objects, you know, eighties objects. But um you know, so did I going back to my this life whole thing. by making podcasts? Thousands of oh, people gosh. listen to your podcasts every day. You wasted thousands of lives making podcasts. Mm. That was so good. He's standing at the ever. at the gates of heaven asking God, Did I waste my life by making <laughs> podcasts? No, he says. You, you wasted thousands, thousands of people of listen to you every day. You wasted thousands of lives. Oh, dude, I saw that and I was like, This speaks to me on so many levels. So yes, we, we you and I are clearly wasting our own and other people's lives, but <clears throat> but you know, there there are certain perimeters and hedges. And and I, I'm going to say this because it seems the most obvious thing to me, and nobody ever says it. And I think it's because perhaps there is so much secret sin in the church that we don't feel like this is something that, that anyone can come out and say. But I'm going to say it because I think it's biblical. And I, I think if we operated this way... Um, th- things would be a little bit different. Um, um, here's the deal. Um, if you have private ongoing sin, you, you should not be in public ministry. Let me repeat that. If you have private ongoing sin, you should not be in public ministry. Now, that doesn't mean that you, you do something stupid or you look at something or there's, you know, some, some naughty bits bounce around on the telly and you don't change a channel and you linger and you're there and you're like, okay, that was wrong. Or let's say you, you headed over to a website. But, but the point is, is Christianity is about repentance. Like we repent. You know, if you do those things and you repent, right? Like, but if you've got this like ongoing wormhole that's burrowing in your life, you shouldn't probably, I mean, the biblical thing is if these things are going on, you shouldn't be in any kind of public ministry, if that makes sense. So if I'm like, oh, my ministry is this to that, um, character matters, right? Like, what at some point, if I allow those things in my life, I'm either saying I don't mind that sin in my life, or I want that sin more than I want, you know. Uh, but but at some some point, you've made a choice to you've made two incongruent choices. You've made a choice that says I'm okay with staying in ministry and being in sin, and the other choice is I'm okay being in sin and staying in ministry, and and these two things don't go together. So mm. what what needs to happen is if you've got an addiction issue with with sexual things, there are places and ways you can get help. You know, in 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 if it were cocaine, if it were alcohol, if it were uh other things, then you would you would stop, you would take a sabbatical. Um if you were at work, work legally has to let you do this. Um you go to rehab, you get the help. And in ministry, it would be the same. And I know, like, maybe people go, oh, but I can't. I can't take that break. Well, first off, that's what team leadership exists for. So if you don't have team leadership, I don't know what to tell you. So, um, but yes, I mean, 
uh, get the help. You know, talk talk to people that can steer in the right direction. And if you're working at a church and you need to take a break, you know, and you you don't feel comfortable saying what it is, if you're not victimizing people, like if you're victimizing people, you're just done. You're just flat out done. Get out now. And I'm telling you, if you're hearing this and you're victimizing people, get out. Don't know how else to say it. <laughs> you cannot be in ministry. Hmm. Um, if if you're struggling with, let's say, looking at porn, get help. Right? Just get help. There's plenty of help. There's Triple X Church. There's, um, you know, uh, software programs that you know, uh, accountability software like there's there's all kinds of things maybe you're like oh my phone i installed this thing on my phone that doesn't allow me now this is what it means it's kind of like if your left hand causes you to sing cut it off i installed this thing on my phone i can't look at pictures on my phone it, it, that was just one of the the things that you know it wiped out was any ability for me to look up any image on any website it will not come up really yeah and and for me, it's kind of like, well, if that's the price I got to pay to eliminate that temptation to look at porn on my phone, that's what it's got to be, you know? So, you know, uh, again, if the left hand causes you to sin, like Jesus Jesus told us, like, hey, do this. And, and I guess in a way, Jesus' statement there is strong. And it's meant to be that, hey, just cut it out. Like, cut out all ability to do it. Like, like that's what you need. You need to be ruthless with sin. And I just feel that we're not serious enough about it. Or somewhere we've right. believed the lie that I have to be in sexual sin. Now, I'll tell you, um, I grew up with porn in my house. I, I think about porn. Like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie to you. I think about it. And my wife and I talk about it. We talk about it. So she'd be like, Hey, have you uh been thinking about and and if I am, I tell her, Yeah, I have actually. If I haven't, and we're open, like there's no sin in that. There's times we'll have these conversations. Hey, sometimes I get these thoughts. You think these are wrong, you know, for me to get these thoughts or these kind of is this just part of being a human? You know, and and we'll have those kinds of conversations and and I, I would hope that all of you uh, in marriage are able to at least work. I, I realize sexuality is very complicated. And particularly if you start factoring in, like, maybe someone got sexually abused, you know, these things kind of, you know, they can take time and trust yeah. and therapy. And so uh, it's not one size fits all. I'm not trying to indicate that at all in your marriage with your wife. But hopefully that'd be something that you could work through as really honest conversations. Keep in mind, my wife and I, we've been in counseling 24 years, uh, you know, in marriage counseling, just because that's what we do. And, and, and we're able to talk about all this stuff with, with a stranger, you know, these things that have to come up, you know. Right. But um sorry dude, I'm I'm sucking all the oxygen out. I just wanted to give everyone a breather. Deep breath. Baby steps. Baby steps. <laughs> what about Bob? You know, I barely remember <clears throat> that. Which I thought was funny you didn't recognize Robert Paulson. I know. Do you remember it now who Robert Paulson was? I do. Hey, he's a guy that is in his, uh, you know, he has breasts. He's in the. Uh, it was Meatloaf. And yeah. Meatloaf. As was soon as killed. you said Meatloaf, I went, oh. And there in was death, something in the movie where he you had say his, his name back. In death, we remember right. Robert Paulson. That's why I thought that meme was so great. And you're like, I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, you send me a Yoda meme with, uh, it says Robert Paulson. His name is. His name is. <laughs> 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 then it was funny, but you know, prior to that, and I'm going and he, he text back. How are we even amigos? <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny because there are so many things. Because you and I have said this, you and I have completely different tastes when it comes to movies. Like we both like sci-fi, but outside of that general love for the genre, <laughs> I don't think we're anything alike <laughs> at all. I think and, I uh, think it's yeah. I think you're right actually. I, I, by the way, I've uh, I've I'm progressing in my life. I've 
I've gone from uh, Epstein didn't kill himself memes to uh, Epstein was murdered memes. So, you know, I'm progressing. Well, that, it, that's worry. good. You'll personal catch on growth. to that a little bit later. Give, give personal bit growth is really important. Um, but, you know, as I, as, as I got that meme, um, I told you Smack Talk could come back in. As we got that meme. Um, and the coffee's starting to kick in. <laughs> nah, I don't have any. <laughs> My kids spilled it. What little I drank came through a paper towel. Um, but, yeah, so when I saw that, I thought it was a, a Epstein meme. And I was trying to, that's where my mind was. I'm oh, trying to yeah, work yeah. it out. Because everything kept... I've been sending is Epstein memes lately. Yeah. Like me it too. is, it has reached the point where I have people literally private messaging me and texting me Epstein <laughs> memes. Like that's how many I put out online. I've become the, the source now for Epstein memes. That's so funny. So I could understand why the Robert Paulson didn't make any sense to you. I no, just thought it was hilarious I, when I saw it. And, and, and I thought, like, you know, Paulson. like if you had said Tyler Durden, that would have stuck right. out. But, you know. Yeah. So, anyways, <clears throat> so um, right now all the millennials have no idea what in the world <laughs> we're talking about. Oh yeah, that would be go watch it, Fight Club. All right, that's that should be like church planning one hundred and one Fight Club. That's and that's, and there's know. and watch it. You know, again, keep in mind it 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 is an R rating and uh, has oh, potty language. Right. Don't watch it with your kids. And uh, <laughs> I'm sure it does. <clears throat> oh my gosh. Uh, that's right. We we would never encourage people to watch that. Never mind. I take everything back. Uh, uh, never go see that movie. Uh, well, Robert it, Paulson. I don't know who Robert it, Paulson is. It was is. amazing Who's Robert social. Who's Robert Paulson? <laughs> it's amazing social commentary and and still holds up to this day, the social and commentary. And what was really amazing is when you finally find out he gave birth to himself. He gave birth to himself. I, like, I, I send you back the uh, the meme or the, the response. Pete, are you ruining another movie for me? <laughs> <laughs> oh man you guys don't under- if you haven't been a long time listener of the podcast you just don't understand and go watch the movie predestination and just know he gives birth to himself <laughs> yeah he pretty much just ruined it for you Feel but it was pain. it's still a great movie in fact i'm i'm like i really want that movie to come out on netflix because i'd really like to see it again and i don't want to pay yeah yeah it was actually a very very good movie so but hey, you know, guys, really, um, if if you do need to talk to somebody, um, talk to a coach, talk to a I know there's always like the the fear oh if I talk to someone I have to tell my wife. Well, you know, um you did you did marry your wife and faithfulness is a big deal and I don't want to destroy my marriage and it, it's more than what we have time to get into today. But what I would say is um, you need to get help or get out or, you know, the the two don't go together. And, and that was kind of my point today is there are ways to walk towards purity. There are things that, that you can do, but you, it does start usually with talking to somebody. If you need to see a counselor, if you need to, to, to grab a friend, somebody, um, sin thrives in the darkness. It, it actually grows in power in secret. Um, But as you confess and you start to tell people things, that's, I believe, in many ways, one of the first major steps to repentance, and it becomes a way to actually get life change. Um, Hiding sin, it's never going to never going to help you, Um, you know, uh, so I know this is old school. I know people don't want to hear this kind of stuff. They want to hear, oh, grace, grace, grace. And, you know, like what you do doesn't matter, but, you know. Uh, for the sake of the gospel, it does matter because keep in mind the gospel is not just Jesus died on the cross for your sins. He could be forgiven. It was also that Jesus rose from the dead so we could walk in newness of life. Mm. That's why Paul preached the death and resurrection of Jesus. It was more than just a ticket to heaven and, hey, what you do doesn't matter. But what you do matters. That's why the resurrection yeah. happened because although that can't save you, um, the way you live proclaims the lordship of Jesus. And when I say lordship of Jesus, I don't mean lordship theology, lordship salvation. That's another theological uh, minefield that I don't want to get into, but it literally means the way you walk worships Jesus, that purity, that ability to overcome sin. Um, Paul links that back to the resurrection in Romans 6. Um, that That is possible and it is powerful and it is true and if we believe the lie that it's a pipe dream, 
then how in the heck is this generation going to have hope? So uh, walking in newness of life is is part of it. Repentance, confession, um, constantly surrendering. So when I say lordship of Jesus, I mean, you know, that, that he is who he said he is. And either he is, and he's stronger than that sin in your life, or he's not who he said he is, and he can't do it. So... Um, that's 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 my piece on war, Pete. That's that's where I'd probably leave it today. But for those of you, you know, I I just who are kind of waffling in the middle. Um, <clears throat> my opinion is that if there was deep secret sin on in any leader's life, that they get out way before. And and you mentioned the guy that ordained me um, years ago, and he's a model. He's actually a model of what to do. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, rather than what not to do. Um, his story was um, he kissed a woman uh, that he was counseling. They, they got a little too close, and he kissed her. And he immediately went and told his elders, hey, I uh, something happened, and I, I was wrong. And um, he dealt with his elders, actually fired him. Um, um, and that was more of a knee-jerk reaction, but... You know, whatever. You know, that's that wasn't the important thing. Um, and David David Hawking was was the minister. He did ordain me, um, and he to me stands as a model. Of that's integrity. That's how you deal with it. And the he was able to say, "I didn't get caught doing this. I I I I I did something stupid, and I own it, and I've repented of it, and I confessed it, and I you know." I'll have some work to do. And and I think that's a lot easier than victims come forward and tell you, you know, you got to, he owned it. He he immediately yeah. rectified it. And to me, that's that's part of leadership in and of itself. That, that and, to and me I said think, that too. I leader. think what's amazing too, and, uh, and I don't mean amazing in a good way, but in a, a very disturbing way, is uh, the church's reaction is to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Right. What he did wasn't right. How he handled it was appropriate. There's right. still such much unforgiveness by the church for someone who's done anything. And it's like, right. we have no problem, no problem taking a porn star who turns their life around and comes to Christ and right. forgiving them of everything they've ever done right. than a, a Christian who literally kisses a woman. And goes, this was wrong. I, I'm married. I shouldn't have kissed this woman. And doesn't do anything further than that. And then we just like throw them out. Oh well, they're they're right. trash now. They're they're of no, they're of no use to us as a human anymore. And it's like, it's so wrong. I mean, I literally we have talked about uh, Michael Cheshire in like uh, 200 episodes, but I mean, Michael in Cheshire. his book, Cheshire, in his book, uh, why we eat our own. I mean, he really goes over that problem. And how the the world looks at Christians and goes, man, you guys are like the most unforgiving people there are. Right. And they're not inaccurate in that. Right. 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 And I just, uh, yeah. So, I mean, I, I know that wasn't the, the point of where we were going with that, but I think. No, it's important, dude. It's important. I think, and, yeah. And why I, I don't want to be hard the point on Chris. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, here's the point that I want people to get from that. Is you need to take responsibility. And like you said. It could mean you need to leave ministry and you need to leave ministry immediately. But at the same time, we need to have forgiveness for those who are leaving ministry. You know, we need to come alongside them. You know, Jesus wouldn't abandon them. So what gives you the right to go out and abandon them? Right. right. You know, and I'm, and I'm not saying that means you, you are, are accepting of what they do. I mean, we don't abandon. We right. shouldn't be abandoning them. Right. No, I agree, and I and I think it's important. And you know, the the thing is, is that everybody's gonna say, you know, um, like I can just hear like where I said, look, I don't want to be hard on the guy. Um, so people might raise up and say, oh, you know, you got it. I'm not, I'm not siding with anybody. I I literally, if they're victims, I think I've said a million times on here. Uh, if they're, See, I, don't I don't know, even know anything about the story. I honestly, I right. the headline. That That's what I'm and saying. Like, but like dude. I said, it. Like I said at the beginning, this guy's, you know, his own life is going to crap on him. He might go to jail. I was like, jail. he's a comedian. I don't understand. Why, why is this right. now a story? He's a, right. like, did he even claim to be anything other than a comedian? Right. 
and 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 so but here's the thing this is what i'm saying is i don't want to add i don't want to be the guy to add to the hell this guy's about to go through because he's he's losing everything he lost his he's losing everything and go to go to jail for what he's done really and, really so bad, some well, bad stuff. he's victimized people i mean and i don't know like we don't know is that too strong of a word i mean Stetzer came out and used that word i haven't read the charisma article that all this came out as an expose I don't know what happened. So I'm well, not, I this is like why I say in the beginning, there. I'm not qualified to speak on anything regarding him. What I really wanted this podcast to be um, is more about us. Like, hey, guys, you know, obviously I'd be an idiot to think that any of you listening aren't also struggling with things, hopefully not the same things. And, but you, if you are, by all means, guys, I just, I just can't say strongly enough. Don't stay in ministry if you've got something that you can't lick on your own, because it's only going to get worse. And inevitably down the road, it's going to come out. It's going to come out this way. Mm. And you don't want that. I don't want that. I don't think the world needs that. I don't think you want that. Um, Just get the help. Like, shouldn't be hard. You know. And while they're so. getting the the help. It, and and <laughs> let's just say it's not bad enough for them to leave ministry. Uh, who can help them out with let's say uh, payroll and and uh, church insurance and workers comp and website design? Uh, who, who can help them out with all that stuff? Well, it's funny you should ask that, Pete. I I would personally go to simplifychurch.com. Wait, wait. Let me write that down. It was what was that again? Simplifychurch. Dot, not D O T, but you know, the little dot, the period. Simplifychurch.com. Wow. <laughs> I'm going to have to remember that one. <laughs> yes. Yes. And, and they will meet for your, all of your bookkeeping and IRS compliancy and even possibly staffing needs that you have. Oh, and they even come now with virtual assistance, should you so require that. Robert Paulson? It's gone kind of creepy, hasn't it? Where's our soundboard at? Do we have sound clips still? No, here's what happened, man. I updated to Catalina on my Mac, and so the soundboard is incompatible with Catalina. So don't upgrade. I'm just telling everyone right now, don't upgrade. Like half of my programs don't work. Adobe doesn't work. And I don't know, to downgrade from Catalina. Yeah. Back, uh, yeah. You know what? I, I heard that. I heard that. So I'm not doing that. Yeah. All right, thanks, All right. well, cool, guys. Thanks right. for joining Peyton and Pete today. This has been us, the real Peyton and Pete Mitchell, reminding you, if you're going to reach the ones nobody's reaching, reaching, you need to go where nobody's going and do what nobody's doing. Scott, Scott, it's time for this week. Stop it. Let's get down to the needy gritty. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for another weekly episode of the Church Planner Podcast with Pete Mitchell and Peyton Jones. We'd love to hear your comments on this episode of the Church Planner Podcast. Visit us online and let us know what you thought at churchplannerpodcast.com. If you subscribe to us via iTunes and have enjoyed the podcast, leave us a positive review. The more positive reviews we receive in iTunes, the more iTunes will promote us to other church planners who would benefit from this show. This podcast is brought to you by the Church Planner Magazine, which is available in the iTunes newsstand or online via churchplannermagazine.com. Music